Thank you. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Thank you for the very gracious, generous, and loving and warm welcome. Our God is a good God. Amen. Amen. Pastor Sweet is always very, very sweet. <laughs> when their generation was named Sweet, not only their name is Sweet, the name has become their nature. So their entire generation, I do not know about their forefathers, but at least looking at him and his children, they are all so sweet. <laughs> Amen. Very rare to find such sweet people, you know. So just like the Lord Jesus said, you are the salt of the world. But to them, he said, you are the sweet of the world. <laughs> so because they are sweet, they spread the sweet fragrance to all, not only in their own congregation, but to all of you who come from out of state and out of country. And um, not only them, but the Shekinah Worship Center have been working so hard this past 10 years, and this is their 11th year to put this conference together. Let's all stand up and give a good blessing to Shekinah Worship Center. Thank you. It's because of them and their call and their zeal for God. We all are gathered here during this conference. Amen? Amen. And ten good years have passed and you all had nice, delicious, sweet cake yesterday. <laughs> Was it sweet? See? Their name is sweet. Even the cake is sweet. So 10 good years have passed and we look forward to another 10 good years more to come. Amen. If the Lord tarries, if the Lord comes quickly, which we all look forward to, Amen. then we'll have, instead of 10, 1,000 good years to come. Amen. Amen. Before I share the word of God with you this morning, I'd like to introduce to you some books that I have written and brought with me. This first book that I would like to introduce to you is called The Voice of Trumpet. A friend of mine, a prophet of God in India, has been privileged by the grace of God to receive visions and revelations concerning what's going to transpire in the coming days on the face of the earth. This will read like the book of Revelation where Rebel, uh, John was blessed to see many, many end-time events concerning God's judgment upon nations, the wrath of God that will be poured out, what will happen, and it's generally mentioned in the Bible, but here God's prophet has been privileged to see specifically how the judgments will manifest in the many nations of the world, and very specifically, there's some information about China, how China will rise up in the last days, and what she will do to the other nations of the world. And many of you have a heart for India. There's also something about India, and also dangers that will come upon trade and businesses, general natural disasters that will come upon the face of the whole world, and revival that will come upon many places and some of the e wicked evil spirits that will be released. We read in the book of Revelation that when the bottomless pit is opened, many spirits were let loose. 
So some of the names of the spirits the Lord revealed to him. Once we know the names of the spirits, we can bind them and their powers can be minimized. So you want to read this wonderful book called The Voice of Trumpet. And we have started a daily TV program. Pastor Joe Sweet and I, we, uh, we do a talk show based on this book, and uh, which uh, you can watch on our network, Angel TV. This book, un unlike just simply writing about, okay, these are the things that are going to take place, I saw this vision, I saw that vision, but it's written in a format like how the biblical prophets saw visions. So this should be read with, in a very meditative and prayerful spirit to understand the meanings of the visions that he has been privileged to see. Like you see locusts flying over fields, waters, and different places, and what they mean. So you, do, you want to read this book. And this is the latest book that I have written and I've brought with me to this conference. And every uh, person in this conference, you will be the first privileged person in the entire world to read this book, The Spirit Control Life. This is a wonderful revelation the Lord gave me when I first came to the U.S. in 1991. And I was praying and asking the Lord a question. How can anybody walk in the Spirit? We read in the Bible, no? Walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So when I was young, I used to think, walk in the Spirit means you are just walking. So if you just simply walk, how can you not fulfill the lust of the flesh? So it is easy to say, walk in the Spirit. But how do you walk in the Spirit? That was my question. So I fasted and prayed for three days. And then the Lord was so merciful to give me this understanding. What it really means to walk in the Spirit. So I wrote a book in the year 1994 titled Walk in the Spirit. And then for lack of funds, I let this book go out of print from 1994 until now. So this book has resurfaced after almost 20 years with a brand new title, The Spirit Control Life. Over the last 20 years, I've received many understanding and some little wisdom from God on this subject. So I expanded this book from four chapters to ten chapters and retitled them very aptly, The Spirit Control Life. The one question that is, uns that is asked and answered in this book is, is it possible for a believer young and old, to live a life without sinning? And the answer is yes. It is absolutely possible to live a life without committing sins. And how is it possible? Only by walking in the Spirit. So then you need to learn how to walk in the Spirit. So this is available at our book table. And this is an awesome book, which many don't like to hear. It's called Judgment in the House of God. On August the 20th, last year, as I was waiting on God, I had a visitation from the Prophet Moses. And he appeared to me and he said, Judgment will now begin in the house of God. And he said, this is the message God wants you to give to the body of Christ. And he sat with me and went down to many finer points and I was commissioned to write this book. So this is the result of a word for the church. How will God judge the church or his house? What manner? So this is a season where the Lord is now judging the church, purifying it, so that all the tears can be pulled out. 
all the leaven can be removed so that the vials are removed only the pure remains and when the pure remains then his glory will be poured out upon the church so we want to read and see where are we making a mistake in the eyes of god what are we doing wrong do we get our foundation right our churches our ministries and our individual life so this is a good book you don't want to miss and uh, our network angel tv we started in the year 2005 and i like to thank all the precious saints from shekhana worship center and from all the saints who attend this conference for the last 10 years we've been faithfully supporting our ministry and giving generously towards our television network it started with one channel in the year 2005 and now by god's grace we had expanded over into eight different networks that covers the entire world and in different languages of the world we have one network satellite over the us that covers the whole of north america right up to the islands in the caribbean in one channel over africa that covers the whole three quarter of the african continent and one channel in the arabic language that covers the entire middle east all the 30 nations in the middle east nations you know the end time events will center around the middle east so god's prophetic word must go to towards that region for them to know what is going to happen in the middle east and what is their destiny in the last days in the plan of god and then we have one channel in the russian language that covers the entire former soviet union russian nations and uh, one over india that we've been doing from the past and one over europe where the many programs are translated into the various languages of europe chiefly german and then in french and other different languages and the newest channel that we started just uh today is the 10th today is the 10th 10 days ago on 1st august the 8th channel to the far east far east primarily targeting the philippines so only one person one filipino must be so excited <laughs> <laughs> philippines is a nation that is going to experience a great exponential revival in the not too distant future that is the destiny god has revealed about the philippines you know when if you hear about the awesome word that has been spoken over the philippines you would wonder next to how god bless israel philippines will be the second nation to israel how god is going to greatly bless prosper and lift her so high up that she will be like a beacon of a lighthouse for the world so we have a responsibility to help the philippines the filipino people in the church to know about the prophetic destiny of god and that is why god has moved us to dedicate a special network for the far east that will cover japan korea the philippines and all the other smaller nations in the far east region to hear the prophetic word of god and this network primarily most of the most of the time people have been watching our network through online in the internet but now since we have this on satellite over the north america you can watch our network through this glory star satellite system or if you have this little box called roku and you can even watch through that roku so these flyers are available at the uh, i'm sure you already picked up all these flyers in case you have not picked up this flyer it's available at the book table 
Now there is a difference between watching through satellite TV and through internet. There's a big vast difference. And um, I encourage every one of you, as you have been blessed through this conference, hearing our teachings, on this network you'll also see the many popular prophetic ministers that are in the US and the not so popular but true prophets of God that are hidden. They don't make into the popular circuit of going around speaking in conferences. Many true prophets of God are hidden. One of my work, my core, when the Lord gave us this network is to bring out these true hidden prophets of God and to give them a platform on our network for their words and the revelations that God give them to go into all over the world. So that's one of the work that we do. So many of uh, even Brother Neville's programs are on our network and uh, Pastor Joe Sweet. Were you blessed by his message this morning? Is that, is that the best you could do? But I tell you one thing, what you saw him this morning is totally different on the television network. He flows so powerfully like a prophet. I was amazed once when I saw him, I was hiding behind in the control room watching him teach. He was just like a prophet. Not like a prophet, a prophet. And he moved powerfully in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and in revelatory knowledge of the Word of God. So, if you want to see him in action as a prophet, you must watch Angel TV. <laughs> and all these other wonderful saints that God has brought together and is going to bring together. So, this is available all over the US and all over the Canada through this uh, glory star system. There are also 75 other Christian TV channels on this network. So you just don't get one network, you get 75 more networks plus many radio channels for one time fee of 199. You don't have to pay a monthly subscription like you do for other networks, you know. No monthly subscription. 199 for life. Is it a good deal? Yeah. Excellent deal. You cannot find this deal in any Walmart. <laughs> so, you know, let me tell you one amazing story about this uh, Glory Star. When I, when I was promoting Angel TV, I was speaking at a church in Alabama. And the chief sales manager of this network was attending that church. And as soon as he heard about me talking about our network, he prayed from the year 2004 right up to the year 2012 that our network will be aired on the Glory Star system. And I never saw him. I never knew he was praying. So when we aired, broadcast our network on the satellite over the US. So I asked my secretary to contact this system, this company, and ask if we could, if they could carry our network on their system. As soon as they heard Angel TV, he said, I have been praying for eight years that Angel TV will come to the US and we will carry on their Glory Star system. So that is an awesome answered prayer. Yeah. Amen. So you may uh, pick up this brochure with all the information that is available here, how you can get the system for 199 for one system. If you want to have all your rooms powered with a system, it's got a very cheap rate. So uh, this is available. Shall we all stand up for a word of prayer?
Let's lift up our eyes and look unto our Maker, our Redeemer, the soon coming Great King. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to the Lord, singing, I love you, Lord, singing, I love you, Lord, singing, I love come before your holy presence on this your blessed holy day thank you for speaking to us this morning through your servant pastor joseph sweet now one more time we ask you lord that you will open our hearts open our ears that we may hear what the spirit of god is speaking to the churches in these last days in the name of the blessed Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I was waiting upon God this morning and asking Him what I should come and share with you on this final day. And very clearly, the word of the Lord came unto me. Tell them how I'm going to judge the church. But this is beyond what I have already written in the book. Please turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. But the time is come. Please note that. Time is come. That judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Please note two things there. The time has come. Second, judgment must begin. So the time has come for the judgment to begin. On the first night when our respected brother Neville Johnson was speaking, he frequently mentioned one phrase, that God will delay time no longer. You remember that? And he also mentioned that God was so gracious and merciful to delay time for two years. And if you read, 
Revelation chapter 10, verse 6 and 7, there a mighty angel of God proclaims with a loud voice, time will delay no longer. So I kept on pondering very deeply over that phrase, time will delay no longer. What does it really mean by that phrase, time will delay no longer? And then I remembered what Brother Neville said, that God had delayed that time for two years. So putting that together, it, it could mean that all this while, because of his great mercy and grace, God had been delaying the time, delaying his purposes, so that we could be found righteous, so that we could come to that place where we should supposedly be. Many a times, if we are honest, you can know for yourself, we had been procrastinating in our destiny. Agreed? We have been procrastinating. We have been dragging our feet. We, we keep on saying to God, Lord, I'm not ready yet. Have you been there? We keep on telling God, Lord, I'm not ready yet. God, please wait. And the God who made the heavens and the earth was so gracious to wait. So gracious. Very gracious. Too gracious to wait. But then, he found that we were still dragging. We were still procrastinating. His purposes have been delayed and delayed and delayed because we tend to misuse his grace. We were misusing his mercy. And we were playing church. Or rather, the right word to use is, we were playing with his grace, playing with his mercy. And now, God has purpose. He has drawn a line. All right. I have waited thus far. Now, time will delay no longer. I will wait no longer. He has cut off a time. When exactly that time is, we do not know yet. Perhaps till the end of this year and beginning January 2014, things will accelerate very, very quickly according to God's plan. That is why from 2012, 2013, the sword of the Lord has begun to go forth among his people to cut asunder if we willingly let go every weight of sin that was pulling us down. Twenty twelve, twenty thirteen. Two gracious years, again gracious years. But now we are standing at the threshold of the end of one season and the beginning of another season. So before you can enter into that season, the house must be cleaned. The house must be cleaned. So we have a choice to make, whether to, to quote what Brother Neville said, to go forward or stay behind. To go forward, you cannot bring your old baggages with you any longer. You couldn't do that. You couldn't say, all the onions and the garlics in Egypt tasted better than this manna. 
that was tasteless. We cannot deny the fact that the walk in the wilderness was tough. I was very blessed yesterday morning when Brother Neville shared or expounded very beautifully on the Song of Solomon saying, God releases the north wind and the south wind, which is not pleasant, but it is good that the two knives are necessary so that the fruit of the Spirit, the fragrances, there are nine fragrances mentioned there, and there are nine fruit of the Spirit. For them all to come out, you know, unless and until the alabaster box is broken, the fragrance is not going to come out. It must be broken. So the alabaster box of our flesh, unless it is broken, those fragrance is not going to come out. So it must be broken. So you must openly embrace the north wind and the south wind. Doesn't matter if it is painful. If you want the fragrances to come out, if you don't want, that's fine. The alabaster box can always remain on a shelf. Doesn't matter. But if you want the fragrance to come out, the Christ-like nature to manifest, then you must embrace the judgments of God. The goodness and the severity of God, both are good. They are not bad. They are meant for good to bring out those sweet fragrances in our life. But it cannot be denied, it will be very painful. It cannot be denied. However, if we are willing to let go and come under the judgment seat of Christ, if we judge ourselves while we are still on this earth, we will stand before His eternal judgment seat uncondemned. So which is better? Right now, then later. If you are judged right now, there is time to redeem what you have lost. But if you are judged later at the eternal throne, there's nothing you can redeem. But many to lose. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it says the fire will try what our works are. If the works are hay, wood and stubble, it will all burn to ashes. So whatever you have done, 44 years of ministry or 55 years of ministry or 10 years of ministry will all go down the drain. Nothing remains. All the honors, all the gifts that you have amassed will all go to waste. It will be like a soldier in the army. Let's suppose he's a captain or a major. But because he didn't put his life right, when he was judged, all the stripes removed from him. All the stripes removed, and he just remains as an ordinary private in the army. All the honors gone. All the glories that was given, the stars, the medals, all removed. All gone. I know of
Sir. 